Frankenstein. We all know the tale. It's the story of science fiction that has sparked moral, ethical, and scientific debate ever since it was written. But what if I were to tell you that it was no longer science fiction, but rather a reality? My name is Cameron Zizek, and I'm going to talk to you today about the first human head transplant to ever be performed. Now, I'm clearly no surgeon myself. However, just as for the rest of the medical community, this procedure is at the forefront of medicine. All anybody can know about it is what they've researched. So I've done my research, and I would like to tell you guys about it. Today, I'm going to explain to you what exactly is going to go into this procedure and just how it is going to be performed. Now, who is involved? The primary surgeon on this case is Sergio Canavero. He is a 52-year-old Italian neurosurgeon. Now, he's brought along his friend, Xiao Ping Ren, a 56-year-old Chinese orthop orthopedic surgeon, in order to assist him on the case. They will be performing the procedure on a yet-to-be-selected Chinese citizen. Now, this procedure is not as simple as two surgeons and a patient in an OR, as it's projected that the surgery will require 80 surgeons, take 36 hours, and cost a whopping 10 million euros. Mm. Now, the coining of this procedure as a head transplant can be a bit confusing to the common ear, and BBC Earth Lab prefers to call it a body transplant, and that is because what is occurring in this procedure is taking someone that has a fully functioning head, but a dysfunctional body, and giving them a functional body from someone that is perhaps brain dead. Now, according to Ohm, which is the publishing company that is handling all of Canavero's press for the procedure, it is set to occur in December of this year, but could also happen in early 2018 as well. It is set to occur in the northeastern city of Harbin, China. Now, it's important to consider that Canavero is a medical doctor. He's a recognized professional in his field. So why would he take on all the criticism of his community and from his peers in order to accomplish this goal? Well, I think he puts it in his own words best. When I went to medical school, I was convinced that before I became a doctor, the first human head transplant would have been performed, <coughs> but it didn't. So I decided to do it, and it became the, the goal of my life. I have been into it for the past 30 years. So with that being said, just how is Canavero going to accomplish this? Now, just like any other procedure, it is performed on animals before it can be performed on humans. The same is said for this one. Now, according to The Independent, which is a news source located in the UK, Xiaoping Ren has already performed over 1,000 procedures on mice. Canavero, however, was not very happy with the results of this procedure as the mice didn't live over a day long under his techniques. So Canavero developed two new techniques to vastly improve the results. They are called HEAVEN, which stands for the Head Anastomosis Venture, and GEMINI, which is a spinal cord fusion protocol. With the use of these two techniques, Canavero was able to find that the mice regained entire motor function 28 days following the procedure and had a much longer lifespan following it. So how is he going to do this on humans? Well, on headtransplantation.org, which is Canavero's personal website that outlines in great detail the way that this procedure is going to occur, he has the details there. However, I've outlined them here in six simple steps for you today. Now, the first step is going to involve cooling down the body in order to slow the metabolism so that the surgeons can work as quickly as possible. The second step is going to involve cutting the skin and the musculature, everything except for the spinal cord. The third step is going to involve reconnecting the blood vessels very quickly so as to restore oxygenation to the brain and to re-warm up the head. Now, the fourth step is the most complicated as it involves severing the spinal cord. Canavero will be doing this with a diamond-edged blade, and BBC Earth Lab gives us this illustration to understand that. Imagine taking a hot knife and putting it through butter. It would be seamless. That's what Canavero is going for here. He wants to make it as seamless as possible so as to exert a minimal amount of force on the spinal cord. Now, the fifth step seems the most elementary in nature, as it involves taking a form of glue called polyethylene glycol, also known as PEG, in order to reconnect the spinal cord. Now, the sixth and final step involves reconnecting the musculature and the skin back to normal. Now, after all this is said and done, the patient will be left in a coma for a minimum of three days, but up to several weeks in, to, in a order to allow everything to set into place. Now, today I've gone over just how this procedure is going to occur and what is involved. But it's important to note that Canavero realizes all the critique that he's taken on from his medical community. He's been called Dr. Frankenstein and received a great amount of ridicule for what he's done. 
However, he believes that if he can not only help to save the life of someone, but help to vastly improve the quality of their life, that all of his efforts will be worth it. Thank you.